Early Warning is a spin-off from NASA's Ames Research Center in Silicon Valley. And we are commercializing a biosensor platform that NASA developed. The core is a chip which has carbon nanotubes on it, and each are populated by different bioprobes, such as E. coli O157H7 or salmonella. And the objective is to take a stream of water, take a 10 liter sample, extract all of the pathogens through a concentrator, and then deliver potential pathogens to the chip for detection. Well, one of the biggest challenges worldwide as, and in Canada is the spread of pathogens. These are biohazards which can uh, seriously injure and kill people. And approximately uh, 20 million people die each year around the world from these pathogens. These are dangerous bacteria, vi uh, bacteria, uh, protozoa, which are parasites and viruses. And Canada has its own problems, including SARS, mad cow disease, uh, E. coli, salmonella, C. difficile, listeria. So not only do we have problems in our water, but it's also within our food, in our hospitals, and it's a big problem spreading throughout our entire uh, environment. There's two benefits. One is speed. Currently, it takes two, two days to two weeks to fetch a water sample, uh, bring it to a laboratory, and check for certain bacteria, which are typically indicators like coliforms or E. coli. And then once you get a positive result, you go back to the site and get another sample. And then after a bit of time, you can determine if there's a problem with the drinking water. Rather than doing all these manual processes, our system will be a fully automated system that would be placed in different locations and get the results, including the sample tested, in a matter of hours. And then sp send the uh, information through a wireless sensor network. So it's speed and also scope. Instead of testing for things like coliform, which are indicators and doesn't capture parasites like Cryptosporidium giardia, it will, it will detect each specific pathogen and also determine if it's dead or alive. Well, first you have anywhere that water comes in. So you have beaches, you have drinking water, you have wastewater, you have the users such as hospitals and food companies, and you also have a very vulnerable population, the elderly, the sick, and children, and they're more likely to uh, get uh, a problem by a pathogen in the water. Immunocompromised people, HIV patients, so these are the people that need special precautions beyond just uh, testing water in the municipality. There is virtually no nanotechnology expertise in Canada because after 10 years, Canada still does not have a national nanotechnology initiative as what was done in the States. That's a big problem because nanotech is the core of multiple technologies and applications. We have no choice but to do our nanotech development throughout the United States in different specialty labs. There is a big problem getting your first customer. And Canadian government agencies, including provincial government agencies, uh, do not take on the type of innovative risk that they should and their compatriots in other places like the States and Europe and Asia do. So even though we can develop good products in Canada, unless we can find excellent Canadian customers in our first sales effort, it's not likely that we will do our marketing effort and commercialization in Canada. Unlike places like the States, which have special programs for buying early stage prototypes, such as DARPA, and that's what built the US aerospace and defense industry into their major exporter, Canada does not do that. And it's surprising for clean tech and medical technologies, where Canada can be world leaders, it's a big void in this uh, commercialization area.